Hi everybody, Eve Harrow, Director of Tourism and Community Development for One Israel Fund. In the middle of a very hot summer, 2021, and I'm very happy to be in the beautiful backyard of an old friend, Anita Tucker, whom I met many years ago when she was in her home in the original Netzer Chazani in Gush Katif. And today's film is going to be about Anita, the rebuilt Netzer Chazani, and the people who are still carrying the spirit of Gush Katif with them, even though they are no longer in their homes on the sand. We came to Gush Katif when it was total empty sand dunes, not a bird in sight, not a weed in sight, not an insect in sight. My kids came there, slid down the sand dunes, saw the sea, and didn't want to leave. And from that, we went on 30 years of agriculture success in growing, children born, grandchildren born, children that married and moved back, weddings, uh, a whole lifetime and uh, very good relations with our Arab neighbors until that day in 2005 when for no reason in the world that anybody to, to this day can explain, everything was destroyed to a pile of rubble. Our parnasa, a way of uh, earning a living, our homes, our roots. Every single family can fill an encyclopedia of what they went through, but you only have two choices in life and it's to go this way or this way. So from the second that we left Gush Katif, we started talking about how we're going to build anew temporarily until we could shortly, surely come back to the sand dunes in Gush Katif again. I think there's not a child that was born here in Netzach Hazani temporary place that doesn't know that this is not home. This is his house, but home is in Gaza, in the place where there is their roots. I think that's probably one of the most painful aspects is that there are a lot of people who become refugees because of war, but in this case, it was the Israeli government that did it and the soldiers that came. And that's what um, makes it an added heartache. But for many people, what we saw here is that you, you kept together as a community because there were some people who really collapsed financially, religiously, because the rabbi said this won't happen or they even allowed it to happen and then it did. So there were a lot of people who had a crisis, of course, with the government, of course, with the army. So many of the, the sacred cows, if you will, that those of us who live in the religious Zionist world are so much a part of came crashing down and a leadership that failed us on almost every single level. But what it allowed is that the simple people who aren't in the headlines were able to show a greatness of spirit and of faith that um, still to this day takes my breath away. It took a little while to recover. It was hard for the young people who had to go in the army then or were in the army then. Many of them had a crisis. But today, again, our youth are in the forefront of the best units in the country. We're proud of them. We have many, many second generation families living us, third generation families that live on the, on the traditions of of Gush Katif and the miracles that we were privileged to see there. And many of the symbols in our synagogue, in our youth buildings, uh, represent the story of Gush Katif so that it won't be forgotten because it's part of the promised land and part of the inheritance of the tribe of Judah. The government disengaged from Gush Katif, but the Gush Katif people did not disengage from the state. Absolutely. If anything, and I think for many of us it also deepened our faith in God and lowered our faith in human beings, which is maybe the right way to be. Right. If every community builds a community based on values and tradition and, and uh, positive things that are part of the, the Jewish-Israeli tradition, then I think we're going to have a country that's going to be okay. So we're here at the amazing Sion and Nava Edri home who are an amazing family from Gush Katif. Uh, Tzion was a huge farmer in uh, Netzach Hazani. When we were thrown out, Edri family is one of those families who right away said, we have to figure out how we can do chesed. So right over here, you can see this beautiful wedding area that they've made during the Corona time when there were families from nearby cities that had nowhere to make their weddings. So they invested a lot of their own money and fixed up this place in order to offer to people to have their weddings here. And then when we decided that we were going to have a place where people could bring their used simcha dresses, Edri said, you know what, put it down on my 
lot, no problem. You're gonna come inside and see how beautiful it is. One of the things that most people don't understand about those who were exiled from Gush Katif is how painful it was for them to be on the receiving end and not on the giving end. So we are in one of their new social initiatives, lending of beautiful dresses and wedding gowns, and people come here from really all over the country. These are beautiful gowns, they can cost thousands of shekels, there's no reason that they should just be used once, and people come here and make these dresses be a part of a few different happy occasions, not just one. And people come, they come from Ranana, they come from Yerushalayim, from Bnei Brak. Of course, from the Azor here, they come from the free, because it's very, very nice and close. It's really important, it's very important to me, that it's a place for all things. If you don't feel that she doesn't have the money, then she's going to take the money. No, I'm going to give them a feeling of the money, that they come and they come and they come. אני מייעצת להם פה מה לקחת, איך לקחת, מה כדאי. מנסות מאוד מאוד לתת להם הרגשה טובה וכיפית שהם באו ונהנו ולקחו שמלה לאירוע. הם לא צריכות להגיד שהם לא קנו אותה. ממש ממש בכיף. The first Purim, after we were thrown out of Gush Katif, many different organizations got together to give Purim costumes to the people who were thrown out of Gush Katif because they didn't have their costumes. And that was the beginning of our costume. Gamach. We have the towns around us that are all different, uh, from different parties that were, were the ones that demonstrated against us in Gush Katif. Uh, they all come here to borrow because kids love costumes and it doesn't matter what their parents think. So it's a beautiful thing. I'm standing in the courtyard of Moadon Yochanan, which is the youth center here in Netzer Chazani. And I'm standing with Chana who will tell us about her brother Yochanan, for whom this was named. My brother Yochanan uh, was killed in uh, the Shayetet uh, operation 25 years ago. In Lebanon. In Lebanon, Lebanon. yes. And uh, in Netzach Hazani in Gush Katif, uh, for his memory, we made the youth uh, center. And uh, after the Itnatkut, we moved it to here. The sign that is uh, outside, a rebirth from there, and uh, it's very popular, a nice place, and a lot of life uh, in it, and uh, it's a very good thing for the memory of him, my brother. When you were um, forced out of Gush Katif, yeah. um, you took Yochanan with you. Uh, yes, when he died, uh, my parents uh, thought uh, the best place to bury him will be next to the sea. So when they forced us out of Gush Katif, they looked for us in a cemetery that is uh, next to the sea, and they buried him in Nitzan. So he was reinterred, and you had to say Shiva again. And... Yes, it wasn't a nice uh, memory. Chana, thank you so much. Thank you. So I'm sitting with Roni Tzror, who is the youth director here in the rebuilt, uh, temporarily rebuilt, Netzer Chazani. As toda raba, shat yoshevet itanu ayom. You like to share a little bit about, kilo, what happened in the last few years. I was born in Gush Katif, in Netzer Chazani. There were also other families in my family. From what I remember, the lives in Gush Katif were very different from the lives of my parents. At the same time, there were also other accidents and accidents. אוטובוסים שאני לא יודעת איך שלחו ככה את הילדים לבית ספר, אבל בי לא היה קיים שום פחד, וזו לא החוויה שחווינו. אבא שלי איבד את כל הפרנסה שלו, את כל העבודה שלו, הוא היה חקלאי מאוד גדול שם, והיינו צריכים להתחיל מההתחלה, הוא לפחות, וגם אנחנו למצוא מסגרת. וזה באמת ההורים שלי אף פעם לא ויתרו לנו, להיות בתוך המסגרת ולהיות בתוך היציבות הזאת כדי לשמור עלינו. ובאמת היום הוא התחיל... מאז הגוש הוא עדיין עובד בחקלאות. ומה עם האחים? אחים שלי, כולם התגייסו לשירות משמעותי. יש לי אח אחד שכן היה לו מאוד קשה להתגייס לצבא. כי? בגלל הגירוש? בגלל הגירוש, זה היה ממש סמוך. אבל ההורים שלי מאוד מאוד ציוניים ומאוד לא יכולים לוותר על הצבא, גם עם כל הקושי שהיה בזה. והוא התגייס ליחידת אגוז, שזו יחידה מובחרת. יש כעס? אני יודעת שהיה מאוד כעס להורים שלי, במיוחד לאבא שלי, אבל הכעס היום לא נמצא. כן יש חוסר הבנה של 
למה? כי הרי זה לא תרם כלום. היום הרקטות הגיעו יותר קרוב אלינו, והם יותר התחזקו והתעצמו מזה, אבל ההורים שלי ממשיכים להיות ציוניים, וההורים שלי לא איבדו את זה, אבל כן היה כעס מאוד מאוד גדול. ומה איתך? שירות לאומי, צבא? אז אני עשיתי שירות לאומי בכפר הנוער, ביונתן, לנערות בסיכון, במשך שנתיים. והיום אני ממשיכה את זה במושב, אני הרכזת נוער, ואני גם לומדת את זה, אני קרימינולוגיה במכללת אשקלון, <אח> ומתכננת גם בעתיד שלי לעבוד בזה, להתעסק עם זה, לנסות להיות בזה הכי טובה. זה מה שאני מנסה לעשות עם הנוער שלנו, להצמיח פה דור שהוא... שהוא המשך של גוש קטיף בעצם, ולהמשיך אותו. Among the small travesties in the great, I'll call it crime, of the expulsion of Gush Katif, was the reinternment of Jews from the cemetery there and the destruction of yeshivot and of synagogues. We are now in one of the most beautiful synagogues that I'm familiar with, rebuilt here in Netzer Chazani. There's a lot of symbolism in this synagogue from the light fixture that, depending on where you stand, looks like separate triangles or together looks like the Star of David, symbolizing the fracture in the Jewish people and then the bringing together. And I think that from these few minutes that we have spent here with Anita Tucker and with others who are living here, we have seen that. We have seen the tremendous break, the tremendous shattering of lives. And we have also met people who are almost inhuman in their ability to put it all back together who have retained their faith both in God and in the state. And what we didn't hear was anger or hatred. And uh, I am in awe of them because I still live with a lot of that. On one of the last days that I was in Gush Katif in the summer of 2005, I was sitting in the park with my two youngest, who at the time were nine and 10, and my littlest, my Neely, came running up to me in fear and in panic. And she said, Imam, the Chayalim are coming, the Chayalim are coming. Our soldiers are coming. And my children were raised to love our soldiers. We feed our soldiers. We have them in our house. They would stay with us. And to hear her talk about soldiers coming in fear was not something that I ever thought would happen. And I know it's the time of your forgiveness, but I have a very hard time and may never forgive the people who did that to this country, who pitted Israelis against Israelis and forced soldiers to take Jewish families out of their homes, take mezuzahs off the door. Um, and uh, that's my own personal pain. And um, one of the lowest points that I think that Israel has ever come to. And it made me also rededicate myself to making sure that that never happens again. And that's the only thing we can do when difficult things happen, is we can't change the past, but we can do everything we can to make sure that it doesn't happen again. <laughs>